Hi, my name is Rebecca Blum and I'm an aspiring aerospace physician and astronaut from Detroit, Michigan. I am 19 years old and I'm currently a freshman studying biology at Brown University in Rhode Island. Thank you International Organization of Aspiring Astronauts for hosting me today and allowing me to share my story. And I'm so excited to hear about other aspiring astronaut journeys during this conference. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about my path as an aspiring astronaut, what sort of programs I've done, what projects I'm pursuing, which can hopefully give you ideas for your next steps. And then I'll also give some insights I've gathered over the years that some of you, may, some of you guys may find helpful. So like many of us here, I fell in love with the night sky pretty early on. My grandpa is an amateur astronomer and he would take me stargazing when I was little. Ever since looking through a telescope for the first time, I knew that I wanted to be an astronaut. Now I know that I want to study space medicine, which is the science of how the human body changes in space due to microgravity and radiation, for example, and how to best mitigate those changes. It would be a dream come true to work as an aerospace physician for NASA and one day be an astronaut. The first training I ever did was at space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. I've graduated from two programs at Space Camp, Advanced Space Academy and Aviation Challenge. The link to Space Camp's website is below if you wanna learn more about it or the application process. Advanced Space Academy is a week-long program open to 15 to 18 year olds, where you learn a ton about space exploration. You complete astronaut training exercises like the one six gravity chair to simulate um, walking on the moon. And you also go in the multi-axis trainer, you learn to scuba dive, and my personal favorite, you go on simulated missions. So how these missions work is everyone on your team is assigned a role, either in a mock mission control, rocket, or space station, and everyone is connected to each other through headsets. To complete the mission, um, you must fulfill your assigned tasks within a lot of time, and then communicate to your team when you've completed those tasks. Just like during real space missions, there can be anomalies or surprise emergencies that pop up, and you must also work through those with your group. For example, my group, <laughs> the year I did it, the flight director and mission control ended up having a heart attack, and my team had to work together to save the flight director, but also keep the mission on track. So there's a little taste of the things that you do in space camp. Now in Aviation Challenge, which I did a separate summer, campers learn more about the Air Force and wilderness survival. There's a lot of teamwork challenges, such as racing to build a water filtration system or a shelter outside. And there's simulations like how to evacuate during an emergency crash landing in the water. Uh, you get to go in a centrifuge and experience several Gs. And just like how Space Camp had those simulated missions, Aviation Challenge has something similar where you fly in a flight simulator. Overall, it's a great time. Both programs, you meet a ton of people passionate about space from around the US and around the world. And I'm still in contact with my space camp friends years later. And some of my best memories are from space camp. So if you ever have the opportunity to go, I would definitely take advantage of it. And if you are over 18, there's something called Adult Space Academy. Um, so if you wanna learn more about space camp's programs, uh, again, the link is below. And at the end of my presentation, I'll put the link to space camp again. So in high school, I joined an organization called Project Possum to continue my training. For those who don't know, Possum stands for Polar Suborbital Science in the Upper Mesosphere. This means that Possum is training citizen scientists like you and me to go on suborbital missions to study noctilucent clouds in the mesosphere. These clouds, which are in the picture to the right here, give clues about climate change. I put the link uh, to Possum's website down below too, so if you want to check that out, I recommend um, clicking it, and um, I completed Advanced Possum Space Academy in spring of 2019. Um, some of me and my possum classmates are in the picture to the left. And during the week-long program at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Florida, I learned a ton about um, aronomy research and atmosphere, remote sensing techniques, and space physiology. I got to practice donning and doffing a real pressurized spacesuit, and I completed hypoxia training in a hyperbaric chamber. And my favorite is I got to fly in an extra 300 plane and got to experience zero G. Um, I guess I would describe the feeling as being underwater, but without the weight of the water around you. Like my arms floated up as if they were on a helium balloon. Uh, I also got to fly the plane and like flip it. Uh, so it was like a wild experience. Again, the link to Project Possum is below if you wanna check it out. 
Um, besides Possum's Around Me research, there's more specialized programs, such as their bioastronautics program, working specifically with spacesuits, and there's a program specifically for educators. Um, I did a program last spring called EVA 102 Operational Space Medicine. And in this program, I learned about wilderness space and emergency medicine and webinars. And then there's also an on-site portion where you practice various skills and triage scenarios in a remote environment to simulate Mars. Um, because of COVID, the on portion part of the program was postponed, but the online instruction portion, which I did get a complete, culminated in a project and paper about a novel space medicine technology or an improvement to some current space medicine procedure. So for my project, I looked at how one could administer biomedical injections in a pressurized spacesuit. Um, so it, like in Apollo era spacesuits, there was an injection patch on the thigh, which you can see um, in the photo to the left, that's just a, a photo I took from my presentation. Um, but later spacesuits uh, removed the patch. So I looked at different ways an improved patch could be implemented. Um, and I looked at other ways uh, medication could be delivered, such as with dissolving transdermal microneedles. And I also proposed a device I made up called the internal injection device that can be put inside a spacesuit to deliver an injection. That's the photo to the right. So as you can see, there was a lot of creative freedom with the project. And if you have any interest in space or emergency medicine, I highly recommend looking into Possum EVA 102 Operational Space Medicine. Uh, also, just like with Space Camp, the people are what make these programs great. I have met so many amazing scientists and professionals while at Possum. We call it like the Possum family and everyone is so supportive of each other. So I would definitely look into getting involved if you have the opportunity. My most recent training has been in emergency medicine. Uh, overall, over the fall semester, I started working for my EMT certification. So EMT stands for Emergency Medical Technician, and they are the healthcare workers that work on ambulances. I was drawn to emergency medicine um, because it's one facet of space medicine, which is what I ultimately want to go into. And it was training that I could do with just a high school diploma. Uh, so I took the course at a local community college in the fall and completed around 90 field hours split between working in the ambulance and then working in the emergency room. Um, and this was during COVID. So there was PPE shortages, um, the hospitals were overrun. It was a very interesting and eye-opening experience. Uh, if anyone works or worked during the front lines of this pandemic, thank you so much. Even though I just got a taste of it, I could tell that this is really, really tough work. So you guys are heroes. Um, my training only included a few shifts, but it was one of the most meaningful things I've, I've done in my life so far. Um, and it really solidified my passion for medicine. Um, so now two main routes I could go with space medicine include seeing patients, but also research. So about two summers ago, I worked in a biology lab at the University of Michigan. The lab was studying how when these worms called C. elegans were put in certain environments, such as a hypoxic environment. Um, the, there was like enzymes in the worms bodies that was produced and that increased the worms lifespans and health spans. So the research had cool astrobiology applications because, you know, space is a hypoxic environment. So in broader terms, the lab raised an interesting question about how some aspects of the space environment may actually be beneficial to organisms. So for a while, um, I was debating whether I would like to focus more on scientific research or seeing patients as I went into the field of space medicine. And after experiencing a bit of both, I'm definitely gravitating more towards working with patients. Uh, I think discovering what you don't like is just as important as figuring out what you do like. It was important for me to realize I got more fulfillment from working and seeing patients. So now I can pursue opportunities that I know will be the most fulfilling for me. So I would say if you don't know right now what your specific interests are, if you just keep exploring, you will soon find yourself, you know, naturally gravitating to certain areas of study. And I would really reflect um, after you've done something and see if it gave you fulfillment and then keep pursuing things like that. So much of being an astronaut is the journey, you know, the journey right here in the right now. And if you aren't loving what you're studying, don't settle, keep exploring, because this is the part that's supposed to be exciting too. Like this, this journey is supposed to be some of the best parts of wanting to be an astronaut. So um, it's not just about going into space. So make sure you love what you're doing. And then another thing I wanna emphasize is creating opportunities for yourself. The summer I did biology research, I originally had different summer plans. I applied to several summer programs, including a NASA internship. 
and I got rejected from all the programs I applied to. I mean, we're all going into a field that is extremely selective where the process of who gets in and who doesn't, you know, it's, it's wholly out of our control. Um, whether, you know, this be an internship, a certain school program, or even the astronaut application process itself. Um, so, like, you're, you might find a time when you don't have any opportunities in front of you, so that's when you want to create opportunities for yourself. Um, with the biology research, it wasn't part of a program or anything. I just emailed a bunch of professors at nearby universities and colleges and said I was interested in research and if they would be able to accommodate a high school student for the summer. Uh, I never heard back from many of the professors, but all you need is just that one. And one professor said they never had a high school student work in their lab before and offered me an interview. I just ended up working there over the summer. So overall, one of the main lessons I have learned so far on my journey is take the opportunities presented to you. Uh, and when you find yourself with no opportunities, then make your own for yourself. Another philosophy of mine is to bring others along on this astronaut journey with you. I think one of the most meaningful and rewarding things you can do on your way to becoming an astronaut is bringing your community along on the ride. And that can look like a lot of different things. For me, starting small, I love to involve my family in my adventures. Every Thanksgiving, I host a space camp for my little cousins. We have created a spaceship under the stairs, a giant space telescope. We converted the office to mission control, and we have these mock missions just like we would at space camp. And a night before bed, uh, I usually teach my cousins um, some space topics like nuclear fusion and the sun or teach them about the planets, sort of paying forward what my grandpa did for me when we used to look through his telescope when I was little. On a wider scale, I like spreading space to my community. In high school, I started a space club called Beyond Earth, and we would hold community-wide stargazing events and planetarium show visits. A lot of people who weren't even in the club would still come to these events to learn more about space. And, you know, it's also just bringing a love for space to the whole community. I actually put everything one would need to start the club at their own school on a flash drive. So if anyone is interested, I can mail you a flash drive. Uh, I've sent flash drives to over five states and internationally. Again, my email is below. So you can just email me if you're interested in starting a Beyond Earth Club at your school. Or if you're interested in a flash drive, just let me know. Other outreach I did in high school include helping my former science teacher run a space camp for kids at a nearby elementary school. So if you are an educator, this is a great way to bring space to your community. It was just an after-school enrichment program where we assigned kids to groups and they worked on space-themed experiments and practiced implementing the scientific method in their little research journals. And my science teacher created the curriculum. So if you are an educator and this is something that you would like to implement, just email me and I'll connect you with my former science teacher. I also was on a local news TV show called Astronomy for Everyone, where I talked about um, going to space, uh, camp, and what starting the Beyond Earth Club was like. And then also before moving away to college, I like to just go to events thrown by the local astronomy club in Michigan. I've given several presentations there about Space Camp and Project Possum. And I also like to bring my telescope to stargazing events and just, you know, showing the public planets and deep sky objects, stuff like that. And on more of like a national scale in high school, I was part of a program called Back to Space. Back to Space's main mission was to bring space into popular culture again and preserve the legacy of the Apollo astronauts. We ran several social media accounts, such as an Instagram, YouTube, Twitter account, and we visited schools to talk about our mission and just spread a love for space. And we've done projects like sending a high altitude balloon to space, and we've also launched rockets. So as you know, space is something that everyone can get involved in, whether someone's interest lies in STEM, public relations, business administration, art, all these positions are needed to make space exploration possible. So by encouraging your community to get involved in space, you're reaching all different types of people and fostering an environment to ensure humans can keep exploring the cosmos. So my message to you all is just keep working hard, make sure you enjoy what you're studying, make opportunities for yourself and bring your community along with you on your journey. Thank you, International Organization of Aspiring Astronauts for giving me the opportunity to speak today if anyone has any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out and email me, even if it's just to connect and say hi. I love meeting all you incredible people as you follow your dreams. Take care. Thank you.